user program P9603 can be used to measure or check the length and radius of a tool as well as check a tool for runout. You should use it to measure tools whose cutting edge is not on center. This will prevent an incorrect length measurement from measuring the center cavity of tools not on center. In this tutorial, we'll focus specifically on length and radius of non-centered tools. See our P9603 runout control tutorial for more details specifically on runout. Example tools include end mills, face mills, slot mills, and bullnose cutters whose longest edge is not on center. There are a total of 15 variables that can be used in this cycle offering operators extensive control over the cycle. However, only four variables are actually required. The other variables can most commonly be omitted so as to use their default values. Let's look at the cycle using only its four required values first before diving into all the other variables. The only variables required to operate 9603 are the H, D, Z, and X variables. The H and D variables define the tool offset numbers to which the values for length and radius will be stored respectively. In this tutorial, we are measuring a ball nose end mill located in tool pod number 4, so we've set our H and D variables to match. The X variable defines the measuring position for the tool's length, where X equals the radius minus the corner radius minus a half a millimeter. In the case of a ball nose end mill, its longest point is always on center, so we use X0. The Z variable defines the measuring position for the tool's radius, where Z equals half a millimeter above the tool's ball cutting edge. Now run the cycle. The cycle will run using only the four variables and default values for all others. You can see from the measurement that the default measuring mode is B0 by the way the tool pushes into the beam to trigger its skip signal. Although B0 is the default measuring mode, Bloom technicians will most commonly recommend B3. They will also have already set it to B3 in your cycle during installation as seen here. Now let's run the cycle again using only the required variables with the addition of B3. Notice how the tool now pulls out of the beam to trigger a skip signal. This is the recommended approach for tool measurement since it avoids problems that arise from coolant and swarf that pass through the beam and cause false trigger signals. Lastly, we'll run the cycle again, this time measuring length and radius of a 10 millimeter diameter end mill. In this example, we will leave in all other variables. This is also how the cycle is shown in your FANUC control to make it easier to modify each variable if you choose to do so. They will already be set with default variables for either metric or inch, depending on your preferred measuring metric. In our case, our program has been set up in metric. Leaving all the non-required variables as they are, we only need to modify the H, D, X, and Z variables. We will also use the recommended measuring mode, B3, which should already be set in the cycle. The end mill we will measure is located in tool pod number 3, so we first update our H and D tool offsets to match. Notice that unlike a ball nose, the longest cutting edge of an end mill is most commonly not on center. For this reason, we must ensure we set X to equal the radius minus corner radius minus a half a millimeter. In this example, the radius is 5 millimeters with no corner radius, so our X variable is set to X 4.5. Likewise, we should follow a similar formula to set our Z variable where Z equals the corner radius plus a half a millimeter. Since there is no corner radius for the tool, Z is set to Z 0.5 to count for the half millimeter. Now let's run the cycle. You can see the tool is measured close to the tool's outside edge, ensuring we are measuring the longest cutting edge of the tool instead of the center cavity. Check your results on the tool offset page to ensure your values match that of the supposed tool you are measuring.